Ecclesiastes 12th chapter. Solomon wrote this book and he was within uh, two to three years of passing from this life. He had an illustrious life, so to speak. King at the age of 20, born into wealth. He had everything that one could ever want. And during his 40 years, he did many things, he accomplished many things. Great wealth, great accomplishments. We read about these things in Scripture. A man of great renown. We read, for example, in 1 Kings 4.34, his wisdom, his achievements were spread all over. And it says, and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon, all the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. This man had a reputation that spread all over the world of that era. We find even the queen of Sheba. She went to his domain. She wanted to find out, are these stories about Solomon, are they real? And so she went there, and it tells us in the ninth chapter of 2 Chronicles, Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon. She came to prove Solomon with hard questions. I've got to find out. I'm going to ask him hard questions. Is what I have heard truth or a fable? I'm talking about a man who had achieved all of these things and we see in the sixth verse, Howbeit I believe not their words until I came, uh, the queen said, and mine eyes had seen it, and behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me, for thou exceeded the fame that I had heard. What I heard was not even the half. Mm -hmm. That just gives you an idea of what man we're talking about who writes Ecclesiastes during the end of his life. We find the book of Ecclesiastes begins with the word vanity, uselessness. He's speaking of life. It ends with the word vanity, uselessness. But as he comes down to sum up his life, this is what he says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter being his life. This is what I've seen. This is what I've done. We just read it. All these things. This is the conclusion of the matter. This is what, where I have arrived after all of my 60 years. It took me a while to get here, 12 chapters in Ecclesiastes. But this is where he comes. Fear God. Now you got it, Solomon. The wise man. It took him a long time to get it. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man this is the purpose of man he's speaking of his life here Solomon passed on a few years after this and his book is closed but you and I we're still living this life. And our book is being written. Yes. In the portals of heaven, it's being written. Yes. So what 
is life all about? We're talking about this is important, that is important. So really, what is the importance of life? What is, I'm talking about one of the Christian faith. That's you and I, saints. What is really important? You know, at one time there's, we heard, well, this is important. That is important. Well, the Word of God tells us what's important. Keep His commandments. Fear God. Yes. Praise the Lord. For this is the whole duty of man. Now we're coming down to ourselves. Solomon's book is closed. Because ours is still open. What's it going to say? And I trust what it's going to say is the conclusion of my life, the conclusion of your life is to fear God. Keep His commandments. Praise the Lord. We are very fortunate to have the Word of God before us so we can read about others, read about their mistakes, their accomplishments, and learn from what we read. And what we learn from Solomon, he had everything, but he had nothing until he got to this point. <clears throat> Stature in life, accomplishments, statues somebody might build in somebody's honor, does that mean anything? What really matters? Let's get right down to it. Well, we know. That's why you're here. We know what really matters. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. Oh, sometimes as we're going along in life, we lose sight of what is at the end of the road. We get caught up like Solomon did. He allowed himself to get caught up in things of this life. He wasted a good part of his life. That which the Lord had given him. Wisdom, talent. A poet. A man of great understanding. High intellect. What'd you do with it, Solomon? Praise the Lord. I know what we're doing with what the Lord has given us. We've been instructed. We're going to be held accountable for what he's given us. Amen. He's given us opportunity to gather in his name. God. He's given us an opportunity. That's why we're here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Oh, well, I'll take care of that next week. How do you know there's going to be a next week? Right. Praise the Lord. It's now. Oh, yes. And we find that the Word of God tells us about commandments in 1 John 3, 23 and 24. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave His commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. This is promise here. We keep his commandments, we dwell in him. And that he abideth in us by the Spirit. Amen? He abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Praise the Lord. We find here He's telling us, keep his commandments. This is what's in it for you. The motivation. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're keeping his commandments. Yeah. We're fearing God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because there is something waiting for us at the end of the road. Praise God. Some years ago, Stephen Covey, we, most of you don't know about him, but he wrote books on motivation, which we were required to read. And one of them was Seven Habits of an Effective Leader. 
And he says in the seventh heaven, when you start out your endeavor, know where you're going. You started out in Christ. We started our journey when our salvation began. And we know where we're going. We're not meandering around. Solomon meandered around for a long time. But he finally got it. We're not going to wait a long time and meander around. Praise the Lord. We're going somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> and as we find in Matthew, Lord tells us about our priorities. Matthew 6.33 Here's this is what we need to get our priorities straight. But see ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you, but first take care of business. You know, we used to say, taking care of business. We're talking about taking care of our spiritual habitation. We're talking about Fearing God and keeping His commandments. That's what it's all about. That is what matters. Praise the Lord. We find <clears throat> we find that Solomon got it right. But it took him a long time to get there. You know why? He had too much yep. of the world around him. That's right. Anything he wanted. He could have anything which was a detriment to his salvation. And sometimes we say, well, I wish I had this, I wish I had that, I wish I had. Well, maybe you're not allowed to have it because it might take you away from where you need to go. We got, we got in mind where we're going Saints, we're going to get there. But we have to continue on. We must continue on through dark days, through nights, difficulty. We continue on because there's a promise waiting for us. Amen. There's a promise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You've made promises to us that you keep. It's up to us, Lord, to continue in the faith. Yes. Continue fearing God. Yes. Fearing that we would, it's not, oh, I'm afraid he's going to strike me dead. That's not the kind of fear we're talking about. Right. We're talking about a fear, <clears throat> Lord, I don't want to disappoint you. It's like when I was a kid, I didn't want to disappoint mom and dad. Of course, when I got to be a teenager, that, shit, that story changed a little bit. I don't know what happens. Excuse me, teenagers, don't get mad at me. I don't know what happens, but some there's a switch that goes on in the brain, and sometimes it uh, causes one to kind of lose sight of what's important. Praise the Lord. The whole matter, the whole matter our life is what we're talking about yeah. that's what we're talking about our book is still open but one day it's going to close what's it going to say mm -hmm. i trust the lord and let's hear the conclusion of the matter the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the duty of man Solomon had something else to say in the seventh chapter, eighth verse. He says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And I'm going to ponder that a little bit. Better is the end of a thing. Is that so all the time? It depends. A kid that starts out 
stealing a little bit of this and that. Is his end going to be better than the beginning? Not necessarily. It might be worse. If he continues down, so we're not talking about this as open to all subject matter. The end of a thing, and we're talking about a manner of life. The end of the manner of life is going to be better than the beginning. The beginning was with our salvation. That's where the beginning starts. But as we go along, the Lord instructs us that we are not to conform with the world as Solomon did. We are not to conform, but we are to be transformed. Transformed into the image. Transformed into the will of God. That's what makes the end better than the beginning. That transformation continues on until we take our last breath. We don't stop. We continue. Praise the Lord. The end is better than the beginning. Now, to be quite honest about it, as we go along on this journey, there are times of difficulty. There are times when we are disrupted. When at times we, we come against obstacles. But the Lord tells us in Isaiah, he's got his hand on us. Praise the Lord. He's got his hand on us. Thank you, Lord. 43rd chapter of Isaiah. Yea, before the day was, I am he. Well, we know that. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Nobody can take you. The evil one would like to, but he can't. The word of God says, I've got you in my hand. Praise the Lord. If you want to stay there. Amen. It's up to us to have that will. Lord, I want to conform to your will. Transform me. You know my nature, Lord. But I want to be like you in that day. That's what makes the end better than the beginning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some years ago, Sister Pat Chetta gave a testimony. It might have been one of her last. And I'm not really sure. And she referred to a song now I Have Everything is the title of the song. Jimmy Swagger has sung that in the past. Now I have everything. Praise the Lord. And, and the Solomon could have written this song. Now I have everything. Everything I need to make me happy. I have Jesus to show me the way. He has saved me, gave me life eternal. Now I have everything. Praise the Lord. That's the end of the matter. Amen. That's the end of our story. Oh, yes. I was, this is Solomon here now. I was making big plans for the future. I was living my lifetime in vain. Yeah, that's right. You said it. Then I prayed for life's only meaning. And the Lord answered him, now I have everything. And she gave that testimony. Praise the Lord. And I don't think it was long after that she passed on to glory. But praise God. Let that be our song. Now I have everything. He's given us all that we need yeah. for the salvation of our soul. Amen. And life's material needs, we depend on him. Yes. 
I think about those saints that in the early days of this church and lived through depression had nothing. Had nothing. Somebody would rap on the door. My mother told me, Sister, the Lord put on my heart to bring this to you. The Lord has a way of taking care of our needs. Yes. Hallelujah. Now I have everything. <clears throat> so let us hear the conclusion of the matter of our lives. And I know, I am confident that you're going to say, as he said, take these words home with you. Fear God. Yeah. Fear God. Lord, I don't want to fail you. I don't want to disappoint you. Praise God. Just who are we talking to? That's right. The Almighty. And we talk to him just as a friend. And he goes on to say, keep his commandments, for this is the whole man duty of man. This is our duty. This is your duty. Oh yeah. You started the race. There's a finish line. When you started the race, you had in mind the finish line, like Covey said. You know where you were going. <clears throat> Praise God. When I was in high school, I ran cross country. I wasn't very good at it. But I was doing it to strengthen my lungs. And the cross country, it's not like a track. You're up and down and all kinds of paths, ways, and it's, it's difficult. But you've got in mind the end. Right. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. But just keep going. A little longer until you get that second wind. Praise God. But when you see the finish line, Oh, you feel like sprinting. You feel like running the last mile home. I want to leave you with these words. This is what life is all about. Amen. Fearing God and keeping his commandments. There's a great reward waiting for you. Amen. 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 The name of the Lord be praised. Amen.